Okay, and we're live, and welcome back to NRA 2017 at the Viridian booth for our fact duty stage. And as all our segments are filmed, we're using fact duty weapon mounted camera systems to film our segments here. We've got two green glocks focused two different ways. We can get two different angles, plus we also have a, a fact micro camera that we can use for close-ups. My name is John Sheehan. I'm the head of law enforcement sales for Viridian Weapon Tech, and I am joined here today by Rob Latham. Uh, from Springfield. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm great. Thanks for having me today. Oh, you bet. Just uh, before we get started, I just want to give everybody a bio. Of course, everyone familiar in the world of competition shooting knows who Rob is, but he's an eight-time IPSC world champion, a 10-time NRA, um, NRA Bianchi Cup champion, a 17-time single stack national champion, and a 26-time USPSA national champion and in his spare time, he provides firearms instruction for the United States military, various federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies, and civilian competitors. And he also worked for Springfield. Man, when do you sleep? There's no time for sleep. I I'll was going to say, die. man, you got a lot on your plate. You got yeah, a lot on your but plate. You realize I don't have a real job, though. So that all that time, everybody else tries to fit these things that I do all the time in their life, that's what I'm doing while you're at work. So I, I got you. Well, I'm you know, living the dream, baby. You are living the dream because you're doing what you love. And yeah, that am. is really, that's the ideal situation. Yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started just in the world of competition shooting for those people out there that are really thinking about trying to do that. Well, in the beginning, um, there was, it, it wasn't really competition, but it was family games. Uh, I grew up shooting. I don't, I don't remember not shooting. My parents took a shooting you know, from the time I can, could walk practically. So we would shoot games uh, uh, when I was a kid and mom and dad would make up games. We'd all shoot. We all had holsters. Everybody in the family had holsters and pistols. And we'd play shooting games. Well, I got pretty good. I, I was large. I grew quickly so I could shoot almost anything by the time I was 10 or 11 years old. By the time I was 12 or 13 years old, I was a very serious shot. I was a pretty good shot at that point. And started reading about the competitions that they had for practical pistol. And one thing led to another, found a local match, started shooting a local match. At this point, I've just been reading about it and shooting with my brothers and sisters and parents. And then that changed everything. I went to a competition, and I shot one match, and it's all I ever wanted to do from then on. I changed everything. I quit playing basketball, quit running track. I, I didn't care. I wanted to get a job so I could afford to, to shoot. And that's just basically been my life since I was you know, 18 years old now. Wow, fantastic. So uh, before you came to work for Springfield, mm -hmm. you, uh, you obviously have done some training. You've trained some military uh, folks, some uh, folks from government agencies, mm -hmm. too, I'm assuming. Yep. You talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, as much as we can talk yep. about right, that. Right, I, you know, I understand. Of, most of the groups I work with are very the top end. I, I don't really spend a lot of time at beginning level or, or generic level training. It's always very specialized, very, it's, it's the guys that are trying to be better and sure. not trying to, not trying just to be trained, but they, they would bring me in for a group that wants to make the next step or see where the, where their limits are. And that's what I kind of specialize from the training standpoint. So as a rule, that's when I train people, it's that level. That of, top tier yeah, that type top -tier of people. Yeah. Military people. That is, that's heck of impressive. And now you're working for Springfield. Well, I've actually, I'm the fifth longest running employee now. Oh, really? It, not from the time I've been sponsored, because they sponsored me as a shooter in, since 19, I think it's 85, but no one can remember anymore. Um, but I've been an employee of Springfield Armory since 1989, so it's at 27 years, 28 years, man. So you've seen a lot of innovations over the years with Springfield. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, we, we think about that. My, my original, the original product they had was the, the product that was the M1A. And that's my first meeting with the company is that I'd shoot uh, uh, competitions where I shot an M1A and I blew one up, borrowed some ammo from a guy and massively overpressured and blew up an M1A right before the uh, Soldier Fortune 3 gun match in 80, I don't know, 83, right? And uh, this was the week before the match. So I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm out of luck. You know, I blown the gun up, so I called Springfield and said, hey, I'm going to send this thing to you if you can check it out. Uh, and uh, yeah. they sent me one, another rifle in, overnight, the same direction. I sent mine back. They put it in a new stock, got it fixed up, sent it back to me. Everything was good to go. And I shot that match, and the person I was talking to at Springfield Armory, even though I didn't know who anybody was, was Dennis Reese, okay. who is the owner now. But it, then Springfield Armory wasn't, you know, 200 people. It was three people. 
So we, the guy answering the phone, the same guy building the gun, the same guy shipping the gun back then, and that wow. was Dennis Reese, who's the owner. And that started a relationship, even though that's kind of, it was behind the scenes and that I didn't know anybody. When they came out with their 1911 pistol line in 85, I think it was, I went to them and said, hey, I'd love to try to build my next guns. Wilson Combat was building my guns at the time. Uh, can I, can you, can, can I get a couple guns from you? And they said, yeah. And that started the relationship. And then I won a few nationals, some world matches with guns, with products built on, with, with custom guns built on their guns. And that just turned into one thing into another to the point where in 1989, Tom and Danny Reese came to me and said, listen, we're going to tie this up forever. What do we have to do? And they you know, basically, like the old saying is, made an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> Good. And I haven't had to work a day since. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> and now, I'm assuming because of your status and everything that you're heavily involved in product development as well, are you? Well, the engineers don't like to hear what the shooters have to say. Okay. Because I generally say, why did you do that? Let's do this, change this shape. And they're like, no, it needs to be that way from an engineering standpoint. So the engineers don't like to hear that. But I do a lot of the testing. Okay. Because I'm the one that comes back and says, okay, we need to fix this. We need to change this. So I don't see it at the beginning. I see it at the end. And then it becomes, you know, of course, the mad scamper to change some things because the pro shooter wants to have something different. So you'll see a lot of my, I guess a way of putting it is a lot of my influence in the product. But I've never designed a gun because the engineers... They, they pretty much do all that. Right. So they, they would do it, then you get it, you tell and them where to tweak it or how they could possibly make it better. Exactly. So the, the whole loaded pistol night program, loaded for us was the upgrades of sights and triggers and all the stuff we've done in the past. All that came from my competition guns. Okay. So we use the competition as a way of testing product. So if you gave it to me and it worked and I shot 10,000 rounds out of it one week and didn't have any problems, then it became a production item in the next in the next revision and that was kind of a way of testing thing and a lot of the stuff you'll see on the guns are how I like them okay you know the XDEM 525 that was built for me okay that was the gun Rob needs a production gun we're gonna throw him a bone and give him the one thing he has been asking for for since we brought this gun out and that's what that gun is wow fantastic so yeah you're very modest about it but actually then you really are kind of part of the product development because well, you do have some input well in i that, do but products. i don't want anybody to get the impression i actually work very hard because oh. i don't <laughs> <laughs> we won't let that get out past the yeah, audience yeah. no here, one so. no one needs to know that i ever work very hard i want everybody to think that my life is so easy and i just goof off oh well, i'm <laughs> sure that's not the case but i know you did bring uh a uh, new pistol with you that yeah. uh, they're featuring at the show this year, and yeah. I think everybody would love to take a look at it, and then I'll pull out a fact micro, and we'll get some close-ups, too. So why don't you go? Okay. Tell so us all about it. Well, this is our new polymer pistol called the XDE. Now, is that a... Does your... Oh, oh I'm thinking, are we going to put a laser on it? You've already got oh. one for it? There's we a camera. We introduced it yesterday, and you've got one today. We actually... Geniuses of Viridian can do anything. The Geniuses of Viridian actually have, within 90 days, a laser that will fit that thing like a glove. So we've already met with your folks, and we are going to have something within 90 days for that, a reactor laser system. Wow, fantastic. So this is the XDE, and what the E, and I'll give you a little background. When you originally came up with the concept for doing this style gun, it was to have a uh, easier to operate the slide. So okay. the XDS, which is our striker-fired polymer pistol, they wanted the, the, the operation of the slide to be easier. It has heavy spring in it because it has to work. You know how all the strike fired guns, one spring works against the other spring, right? right? So it has to have a heavy recoil spring. Well, by changing to a hammer-fired gun, they didn't have to. Well, the E originally was for easy, as okay. in easy to operate. Well, somewhere before we actually released it, and it wasn't as long ago as you might think. It was close towards its, production, its introduction date The thing turned to external hammer because the real feature was that it has an external hammer. So for you guys that are familiar with DASA guns, this won't be a shocker to you. You've seen this before, but for us it's a big deal because all we've had are single action 1911s and striker or uh, striker fired guns up till now. But by doing the DASA thing, we were able to produce a product for another segment of shooters that for whatever reason, if you're uncomfortable with a 1911 cocked and locked or you're uncomfortable with a uh, with a striker-fired gun, well, now we've given you the third option. And basically, once it's cocked, it's in single action mode now. You can put the safety on and it won't fire. So it works like a 1911. Take safety off, it would fire. When it's in that position, you can also decock it. It's an ambi 
safety decocky, let go, now you're in trigger cocking mode. And if you want, at this position, you put the safety on, deactivates the trigger again. Right. So basically, you know, giving people a little bit of a, a, a history lesson, we all use the term double action, single action. In reality, double action has become synonymous with trigger cocking. But originally, a double action in the revolver was because you could pull the trigger to fire it or you could cock it to fire it, right? So that's where the double action was. So calling it double action, single action is kind of, you know, the Department of Military Intelligence Department, right? Right, right. It's, it's, it's redundancy. It's, it's redundant, but, but we've all accepted it. So you have trigger cocking mode. If you decock it, you have your trigger cocking mode. Gun cycles, you're in single action mode. So it simply gives the option for somebody that... Especially, I, I find, one of the things we found is with appendix carry, a lot of people aren't comfortable with a, either a striker gun or a, a cocked and locked, like a single action gun. Sure. And I am. I don't have a problem yeah, with that. Too. And I do it all the time. But for somebody else that isn't going to, if this is the option they need to make that work for them, there it is. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing that strikes me about it, too, is it's so slim. Right. That absolutely, it'd be, it's yeah, tailor-made it's, for appendix carry. It's, well, it really is slim. This gun is tailor-made for, for exactly that. It's very big concealable. You still hold on to it, but it is very thin. It's an inch thick, just like the XDSs are. actually uses uh, two of the three magazines that are available for XDS. Okay. Are the same magazines. And calibers? Uh, nine millimeter nine? right now. Okay. Knowing us, I would assume there are other things on the way. Okay. Um, but as of right now, we don't have it. But okay. I'm sure there'll be other calibers coming. Gotcha. All right. And again, we will have a Viridian laser for this within 90 days from yep. our reactor series, which will be instant on technology. So as it's coming out of the holster, that laser will activate Im immediately. So right. uh, nice little option for this new pistol coming on All the right. market. And where are we going to be charging for this? How much is 519 this? is MSRP. So okay. I have no idea what they really sell for on the streets. It's usually less than that. But okay. Yeah. Real world, about 500 yeah. bucks or so. Yeah, okay. somewhere like that. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Well, this is a really nice pistol. Oh, and magazine capacity on that, too. Um, the flush fit magazine is eight, and the extended magazine is nine. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And I know that besides everything else you do with Springfield, that you are not the only competition shooter, and you brought a couple no. of people along with you, some uh, very <laughs> cute little uh, competitors here. Can you yeah, tell us about uh, these really gals? they're cute right until you have to shoot against them. Then the cuteness goes away pretty fast. Is that right? Okay. Well, these are the wood. Sisters, this is Jay Lease in the blue and Justine in the green. Microphone's on, so go ahead and say hi to everybody, ladies. Hello. It's almost like a delicious dish moment there. You know, from it, SNL? I, it hi. really is. You've never seen it. It won't mean anything to you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, Jay Lease is 14 and Justine is 13. And I, I met them at a USPSA National in St. George, Utah, three years ago, I think it was. Yeah. Does that sound right to you? Yes. And uh, when I saw them, they were a lot smaller, a lot younger, I should say, then. It was a lot shorter. And they were just adorable because the whole rig looked huge on them. But they were shooting XDM 525s, so that really drew my attention to them. And after I got to know them a little bit, I just wanted them to shoot on our team. I really wanted them involved. So that's kind of where they've come from. Now, here's the catch. A lot of people look at them and go like, oh, you got a couple of girls shooting for you. That is not what they are. Those are monsters right there dressed as little girls. <laughs> they are... Vicious, mean, bloodthirsty. <laughs> I am sweet co competitors. To you. <laughs> now, do, do do girls compete together? Do you ever com uh, on the same competitions? Yeah, yeah we can. We Who yeah. usually wins? Me. Whoa. Oh, well, there's see. The <laughs> <laughs> well, the reality I is, we try to keep them in separate divisions because they do try hard to beat each other. There, there is a sibling rivalry going there so generally uh, well like the single stack nationals obviously they'll both shoot single stack but through the course of the year we they, they kind of separate out and we have them shoot different di divisions so they beat up on other people more than they beat up on each other okay well Jay Lee's why don't you tell everybody about the competitions that you've shot at that you've uh, done very well at I mainly shoot USPSA um, area 1 area 2 area 3 area 4 those are all area matches that I've shot um, I've shot a couple nationals. How'd you um, tell them how you did it. The, tell me, tell them everybody what you did at area one and two. Those okay. are the most recent matches. Um, at area one and two, I placed high junior in single stack, high lady in single stack, and in both matches, I placed second B class in single stack. Impressive, very impressive. Yeah, she, she won the she won the ladies division outright. 
not just the junior division. She won the ladies. The outright. ladies division. How that did you finish at those two? Yeah, Justine. Now tell us about yours. Um, I won high ladies production, high junior production, and third place A class. So. Fantastic. Very impressive. They just shot the multi gun nationals. The J. J. Lee didn't shoot because she has some broken ribs or something. Not Popped broken. ribs. Okay, pop. But uh, Green, you shot it, right? Yeah. How'd you do? I took fourth lady tech ops. Wow. Um, I'm 14. I'm, I'm sorry? They're all, oh, uh, they're all old, you know? older the than us. Ages. Like I, I tend not to ask to ages. To, 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 yeah. to the Most girls, the all are. the people they're shooting against are old. So somebody that's 22 years old is old. There's an old lady. To them. Yeah. Yeah. Old. yeah. Older than us. Well, at the area two, they beat. Uh, who shot single stack? Did you shoot? Okay. I shot she beat stack. somebody who was the multi-time U.S. national champion in ladies division, who is also a friend of ours. And no, I, I train uh, three times a week. And then I shoot a match every weekend. Yeah. It does. And Springfield sponsors that? Yes, we do. Uh, well, we, it's kind of an interesting program because I care more about them as character than I care about them for shooting. That their fantastic shots is almost a bonus on it, but they can they can talk to people. They put to get they put out a really good vibe and a really good image for us. They're exactly who you'd want to be spokespeople for you. Uh, and but the f I think the best part about our deal is the grades. Oh, they have uh, to keep what's the to, what's the deal? You know the deal. You have to get all A's. You have to be or higher. They have to get all A's. If they don't get all A's, we have a problem. You said B or higher. B you just said A's. That We're changing that. We're changing. No more B's. B's and you're out. Life well, is harsh. Well, in any event, you know, you're y'all are competing against adult women oh, yeah. and winning. Uh, you're keeping uh, better than the B average, A averages in school, and I guess that, you know, not only is that a testament to you guys, it's a testament to your folks. Are your folks yeah. out there? They're, they're the two in front. Awesome. That's really great, mom and dad. You've done a great job with these. They two have. Gals. They have. They have created good human beings that happen to be really good shots. Yeah, you can tell. You yeah. can tell. Well, Except tell you, for you. This has been a, 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 a phenomenal segment. I'm really so glad that, uh, that we brought the girls up here. And Rob, thank you so much for your time today and for imparting uh, some uh, new product knowledge to us and, uh, and a little bit about your career. I really appreciate it. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank uh, you. I can't wait to see your new laser for that uh, XDE. 90 days. You'll have by the end of the 90 summer. 90 days. You hear that? Three months right now. Three months. There's, we put them to a, feet to the fire on that. Easy breezy. All Problem. right. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you in, at clock. We'll have the next segment then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.